I think this offense is not all that exciting to watch. I know their strength is running the ball with Ramondre Stevenson. But at some point, I don't think yeah. that's going to be enough to get by and remain competitive, and they're going to have to do more than what they've Well, we done. knew. I mean, I think we knew coming in that they were playing with a, um, I would say, with, with limits for sure. They're going to be starting three rookies tonight. Caden Wallace at left tackle, um, Layden Robinson at guard, and then Jalen Polk at receiver. It's I, – I think to some degree there's only so much you can do with what you've got right now and, and, and the personnel the way it's presently constituted. I think we knew this, guys. Like I think we knew coming into the year, like for them to be competitive at all, they were going to have to play, you know, like sort of a four corners game where it's like slow the game down, try to control things through your run game, manage down and distance, win on defense, limit the amount of times the other team has the ball, all of that. Like it's almost like the 1990 Giants, right? Like that is the, that is the game plan. And we knew that coming into the year, that's the way that they have to keep games competitive. I think it's just a reflection of the limits on their personnel as much as anything else. I don't think there's anything more to it than that. And that's going to be where, where it gets interesting when we get to November 1st. You know, if they're whatever, two and seven, I don't know how many games will be played by then, but like whatever the number is. Um, and now all of a sudden, maybe people aren't making the drive to Gillette, you know? And do you get to a point where fans don't want to go watch Jacoby Brissett play out the string? That's where I think the challenge shifts to ownership a little bit, like where it's this ownership now, like feeling the heat of not having people in the stands to buy their $15 Bud Lights. So now I'm going to lean on the on the staff a little bit like, Hey, when are we going to see Drake? Cause that will be the, at that point, you'll be at the point where it's like now one of the levers that you can pull to get excitement from the fan base would be to play the rookie quarterback. All right, let's go to uh, Max. He's in the truck. Hey, Max. Hey, what's up guys? Happy game day. Hey, Max. Um, what's up, Max? How's it going, Zoe? How you doing, man? So, How's that truck? Good. It's good. <laughs> Um, so I think the Patriots need to put pressure on Aaron Rodgers. They can't let him sit back there and pick him apart. And they also got to mix up the run with the pass. They can't rely heavy on the run. Thanks for taking my call, guys. Go Pats. Okay, Max. Okay. I agree with his sentiment. Okay. okay. I agree so with that. Pressure Rodgers and mix the run with the pass. Are you saying you got to throw the ball like more? You got to throw the ball more. It is really – inexcusable that last week Pop Douglas didn't have a single target. Do you believe in targeting receivers, Bert? That you can go into a game and say we're going to force the ball to this guy in so this how game. Many, how many snaps is he playing? Uh, I could tell you. If you if so if we pull that up, right? Um, hold on. So hang on one second. Uh, okay, but let's say... You guys have the NFL GSI, GSIS site? Pop played 38 snaps, 56% of the snaps. 38 okay. plays, zero yeah. targets. Okay, so, like, number one, that tells you he's probably not getting open. Okay? So, now if you have a guy who's not getting open, you start forcing him the ball, what good does that do you? Why the you coach is saying he's open. If you can't get well, then is it on the quarterback? Is that the question? It could I think, be. I think it's a combination of protection and QB. Oh, yeah, I know that, that was the other thing I was going to bring up, is the protection not holding up for long enough. For him, mm-hmm. for the for Jacoby to get deep enough in his progression where he can get the ball to him, so there could be a number of different factors. How about here. adjusting the game plan to put him uh, earlier in the progression, or throwing him screens or that sort of stuff? You could do Bubble that. screen, yeah. Hand him a freaking jet sweep, yeah. It's not that complicated. You can do things like that. Absolutely, they should do that. That should be one of their focuses. The reverse he ran a week ago shouldn't be with Polk. It should be with him. He's your most explosive player. Polk runs a five two five four five two. Sorry. Four five two. Yeah, he doesn't run a five two, but um, yeah. yeah, I mean, but Polk, you're right. Polk is more of like the. I think he's not Anquan Bolden. I'm not saying that. Good route like, runner. He's that type of receiver. He's that type of player. Like he's the bigger, like possession receiver. So, yeah, I mean, like there's, uh, look, I, I, it could be a number of different things, but yeah, I think that there's definitely a way to get you know Douglas the ball in space a little bit more, and I'll be interested to see if they do it tonight. Um. Yeah, what is your thought in general on this offense through two weeks then? I mean, you're telling me this is the way they've got to be. It is boring at times, but... I think what's... it's fine. I mean, like, I, I think honestly, like I, I think for what you have and for what they're being asked to do, I think if you look at their game plan over the first two weeks of the, of the, of the year, 
it has been to slow the game down again to play that four corners game really where exciting. you are and, and where you're going to lean on your defense and that's their path to victory their path to victory is not and, and it kills me when i hear it like because it's like there can be creativity in the run game you just if you don't know what you're looking at you just don't see it right <laughs> there's different things you're doing in the run game where there's different things that you can do in the run game to be creative that like like quite honestly, not every fan's going to see. If you're running a reverse or an end around, like any idiot on his couch can tell that you're doing those things. If you're doing things in the run game that are different, that are you know like managing your offensive line issue, you can't see those things as readily. So, you think the number of touches for Ramondre Stevenson is sustainable? I, regardless of your creativity in the run game, do you think that that can hold up? I don't. I, I what's get he it at right now. Uh, he's on pace for 432 touches. That's a lot. Yeah, it is. That's a lot. But we saw them incorporate Antonio Gibson last week. Like, I, yeah, he's got 25 carries in week one, and you were running the ball a lot. Like, Gibson still had seven. So, like, yeah, like, it's on them to develop some more depth at running back. But this is their path to victory. If you want them to win games, then this is sort of what they have to do. It's the, it's the reality of the roster. Should they have gone for it on fourth down, fourth and one in overtime? E- I'm sorry. Four, I have to correct myself. Thank you, real Alex Barth. It's 434 touches that Stevenson's on pace for. I thought it was 432. Christian McCaffrey had the most in the NFL last year with 339 in 16 games. So I'm looking at that situation. They were. I want to pull it up again so I don't get it wrong. So it would have been... Fourth and one right around their own 40. Their own 40. So the problem with that is you is if you don't get it, you basically lost the game. Yeah, which is what they ended up doing, which is what how that game was probably going right. to end if they didn't score on the first drive. But again, if, 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 the, if the way that you've sold to your team is that you're going to win games through your defense, then aren't you going to put it in your defense's hands in that spot? So, like, Who do you trust more? I think that that's the question here. Oh, they Are absolutely should t- trust their defense more. Without a doubt, they right. should. But let's say, and this is what I've been saying all week, let's say the defense does its job and they get off. Right? They're off the field. They get a stop. Do you think the Patriots are going down and winning that game? Do you have any faith that if the Jets took any amount of time off the but clock, let's time, say the three Seahawks, minutes. You mean, the Seahawks, you mean. Oh, sorry, what did I say? You said Jets. I don't know why I'm doing okay, that. So, but anyway, like. The Seahawks take three minutes off the clock. The Pats don't have enough time to go down and even get a field goal. At that point. Their drives take forever. At that They're point, slow. They can't throw. They point, have to run, run, run. At that point, one of two things can happen that are better than what you wound up with because it's a 10-minute period. So you're hope playing for a tie? You win or tie. What a bunch of cowards. You win or tie. I, look, 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 I'm just looking at the way they're, they're playing, playing with house money here. They have zero expectations of a good year. They should just be going for it. They I already fouled things up at the end of the first half. They couldn't close out the game in regulation. They get the kick blocked on a stupid uh, decision by by Austin Hooper. At this point, it's like you've got to just go for it at this point. You can't put everything on this defense. I personally agree like that they probably should have gone for that. Okay, yes. thank you. Now I feel better about it. <laughs> now, I feel, now I feel like you're seeing the light a little bit over there. You know? I mean, I, I, I won't fault them for being aggressive in their decision-making. That's for sure. I won't fault them if they start – trying to throw the ball more and it ends up leading to turnovers and mistakes and they still are losing games because at least they'll be trying something. Right. I don't think you can play four corners over 17 games. I don't think that works because as you say, you want to win games. Yeah. But how soon does that run out? What's the shelf life of game planning like that? Even with passing being down in this league, by the way. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, I think as much as anything else is sort of the, your path to victory that you've sold to the team and, Look, this is their, they they believe that they're going to win through their defense in their run game. I mean, you saw what happened in the at the end of regulation when they when they took that sack. There was nowhere for the the, the there was nowhere for Jacoby to, bro, to go. Uh, email. Jacoby was Jacoby was pinned. Got thrown away though. He's got to throw that away. How can he throw? He, was, he couldn't because he was pinned in the pocket. They had him pinned okay. in, and so like if he throws it away there out of the pocket, that's grounding. So you're taking the sack anyway. You got to find a receiver in the area somewhere. Can't take that sack. Yeah. Can't have it happen. Uh, Justin emailed in. He wanted to know uh, if we could ask you, Bert, if it's okay to talk about AAV in the NHL. A lot of That's discussion about me. Jeremy yeah. Swayman. <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, give you, I'll give you the thumbs up on that one. All right, thumbs up from Bert on AAV when we talk NHL contracts, so that's good to know. Hey, if you like that clip, check out more videos from Zolak and Bertrand right here. For more Patriots analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. And for all the latest from the Sports Hub, Download the app at 98.5thesportshub.com.